quality fruit that you, know, you, can, you can see them, you'll pick them up. Right? I mean, it was supposed to be more high quality food, but I have a hard time to see that because I'm getting anthracnose, I'm getting, uh, you know, with all this rain that we was getting. And then last year I had more uh, mealy bugs and scales on, on the mango fruit. So any mini bug on scale on the mango fruit put spots on them and they're not as marketable. And so I think that was because it was too dense the canopy. And maybe it's my management that I just need to open up the canopy a little bit more. But I think because it's so dense in here that I get a little bit more mini bugs and scales. What about I mean your fungicide and so forth? Right. Do you, how do you, what, what do you do for the canopy? Uh, so I rotate between uh, sulfur, which is the cheapest and easiest. You're supposed to have an agitator with, with most fungicides. You're supposed to have an av agitator. I don't have an agitator. I just use them back and back spray, dance around. <laughs> 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 Every few steps. You know, that get old. Ultimately, <laughs> you need one, one sprayer with an agitator. And then, uh, so I, I rotate sulfur and then uh, potassium silicate which is uh, still matrix is the brand that I use and these are all omni rated but uh but I'm not really at it but uh and then MP insecticide or so I rotate those three I add stuff to them I add uh you gotta watch how you add stuff calcium you cannot add really calcium to sulfur it makes it gel you make them gel up but I but I can get away with adding that to the potassium silicate I can add so I add uh fertilizer through it if it's at the right time of the year uh, I fertilize right now I, I I do majority of my fertilizer with foliar feed with spraying right and so uh, one time a year I spray with like a, a more of a complete fertilizer with, with a little bit of nitrogen in it and then I also spray just micronutrients my soil out here is real alkaline about 8 pH 8 so I do get micronutrient deficiencies, especially with plants that require high acid soil like uh, like these lemons. I gotta think that this lemon tree needs, uh, is, is doesn't like the high pH soil because I, I gotta spray this guy with micronutrients more often than any of the other trees or they just turn yellow and not productive at all. Uh, one with the high alkaline soil, trees get a hard time pick up micronutrients. So you can bypass that by foliar feeding if you got it, which I usually do. The canopy management is the biggest advantage of the low tree. Or if you if you're gonna do everything by hand, if you're gonna do everything by hand, say you only get one row of mangoes at this density or two rows of mangoes at this density, then it is good. It is a good practice. And I do plan on keeping my trees low. I just don't plan on the ultra high density anymore. I'm more uh, leaning just towards the regular high density, maybe 150 trees to 200 trees per acre. But for, this is for mangoes specifically. Let's um, check out the trellises. The trellises came second. I knew about the... I just want to, on, on your, the next ones that you're going to do, are you going to let the trees grow bigger? And how often do you have to trim these to keep them so small? So, we, I come in after, directly after harvest, and I do one big pruning, and that's pretty much all I do. And, we keep, and, uh, and it, it hasn't interrupted the, the fruiting, right? It, it continues to do this more. With the trellises, the, the, the difference with the trellises is that it becomes so labor intensive to prune on the trellises that by the time I'm done with the last trellis, I could literally go back to the start and do it all again. Now you said you just wanted to do it now. I've seen a couple of people cut away back. Oh, yeah. I see so, these guys, so these guys that are cut way back, this is my passion project. I don't expect anything from these guys, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a breeding program. I'm going to graft, uh, I, I want to try to cross more polyembryonic varieties with monoembryonic varieties and try to get co more consistent bearing on some of our, our, our fruits, right, with like white theory. I'm going to try to mix white theory with Nam Lak Mai and just see what I can get with that. And so this is my passion project. I'm going to graft on different varieties and then I'm, if I can ever get them to flower at the same time, I'll throw a net over them and try to get them some, some kind of control over pollination and uh, see if I can develop it's some different varieties. So
it doesn't self pollinate necessarily, so I'm kind of wondering. Like I have a friend who does it, but he puts a beehive into it. He builds a, like a bigger entrapment and then puts the beehive into it. But I don't want to do that. That's so much work. <laughs> so I'm gonna hope that something gets in and. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Really? That's, that's, that's interesting. Right. Because the Anona's really like hand pollinating. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 It really works well. I think some of the trees I let get too big because I had a different plan that had, had kind of changed. So I'm gonna have to get them back a little bit smaller. But it's a little, it's a, yeah, it's a little too big. That's part of my uh, common mango trees. I, I'm still trying to keep a couple common mangoes so I can get root, uh, root stock from. Yeah. But, uh, you plan on top working any of the varieties that you're not happy with? I top work quite a bit on, on that orchard back there, uh, on, on that field, and I've top worked these ones as well. I've top worked with uh, with the kid varieties and to change the variety from the from these guys. I like top working. I think when I move forward, like with a bigger planting, I'm gonna come in and just plant seedlings and top work everything. Because uh, I I did that I, I didn't do that but. I did about 20 top work on that one and I probably got 18 out of the 20 percent. When you change the, when you graft on a different variety onto the, onto the existing tree. And the, 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 what I think is top working is that you have this robust root system and the tree is really healthy. So when you graft on, you get good success. Because in the nursery, in the grafting into pots, the number one thing you can do for success is have a really, really healthy root stock. And if your rootstock is not really healthy, then the results of the grafting will go down, right? And so top working, you get a bigger root, root system, you get a bigger, more vigorous tree, and top working is pretty successful. Uh, you know, like apples uh, and a lot of the stone fruits, all of the orchards are like consistently top working. Now they do high density, which is completely different. But with the older ones, they would completely go in and change the varieties all the time. As the variety and as the as the demand by the consumers change and their, their requirement on their apple change, they had to change their varieties, right? So it, it's something that is always done in commercial settings. Uh, with citrus, I, in my experience was that I got much better results from grafting onto my seedlings that were out in the field. I had special rootstock seeds. Much better results grafting in the field than grafting. Yeah, no, I see. I had such good success with, with the mango that I don't want to do it in a nursery anymore. Nursery requires weeding pots, it requires management of the nursery. Keeping them watered. Yeah, yeah keeping them watered. watered. I, like, I don't want to do that. If I got to do 6,000 trees, I don't want to have a nursery that can hold 6,000 trees. I don't need to pay two full time workers just to manage your nursery. So, my goal now, is, my, my plan is to just go in and plant seedlings and follow up by grafting. So after I planted this, the whole this field, the whole goal was that the next year I would plant with a different style. But I originally I thought I'd just widen it out or narrow it in and just plant with a different density. But then the next year I heard about the open tatura trellis because Peter Salaris, uh, who has been going around Hawaii for the last few years and then and promoting the open tatura trellis, had come to our our conference and so I decided that I was going to do it with mango. At that point, not too much people was doing it with mango. It was mostly other crops, and uh, and so this field is, I uh, guess, in the fourth year now. And you can see, for the most part, this has been trellis using the the central leader style, which is just that you can see coming up. You have a central leader, and then each wire you set up the branches to go along the wire. This field, this. Is, uh, other wire at 18 inches. Now, if I was going to do it again, I wouldn't do it with the bottom wire at 24 inches. There's almost no reason to do that. I harvest luckily 10% of the feet on the bottom wire because it's just Start off at maybe 30, 60 inches, maybe even 30. 
bring in this from 18 inches to 15 inches and still get the same amount of branches. These are also planted in 18 uh, spacing. So with 18 spacing, it only has to do four feet. Absolutely doesn't like this style at all. You, know, you, you won't be able to manage it with a, with a central leader. You know, the branches don't like to grow laterally at all, or they'll just, they'll just die if you try to tie them down laterally. So you gotta set up multi stem system, and that the fruit that is like within this tree from us are the biggest, are the most, are the biggest like, when you start to get out past that kind of two feet range, the fruit gets smaller. Mangoes like the central leader. Mangoes can grow up that early and, uh, and still be productive. The thing about mangoes is that it flowers off of the, the terminal end, right? Which means it makes it pretty long. So any flowering on the bottom wire will pretty much just end up on the ground. But um, also, if it doesn't flower, and then all of a sudden, I am getting. So the whole thing is to create this two-dimensional canopy that is pretty flat, right? And so if you miss on flowering like this, then it gets so far out that when it does flower, it's going to be so far down. So that is part of the management uh, struggle. Is this The whole idea was with a central leader that as long as you maintain a good center leader, that it can keep management of the finger of the tree. But I haven't been able to really replicate that. This style, the open tattoo trellis system, was designed for temperate zone fruit. Apples, peaches, pears, plums, all the stone fruits. And they've gone from picking 10 <coughs> bins per acre using this, the trellis to picking over 100 bins per acre using the trellis. So it had 10 times, 10 fold increase of production of apples right the difference between temperate zone is that they get dormant periods where they lose their, all their growth right and they stop growing they lose their leaves everything drop back and then temperate fruits especially like apples and uh, most of the stone fruits you get dwarf varieties and that dwarf variety is perhaps the number one key with the trellis is that you're not going to be able to control the vigor on these mango trees i don't care what they say maybe <coughs> I mean, the Nam Dak Mai, okay, the Nam Dak Mai grows uh, maybe one third the, the rate of, of the kit variety, right? So the, so the Nam Dak Mai will, will stay shorter for longer. Now, in Florida, they're developing two stocks, one called Eva and one called Saber. And these root stocks consistently produce more mango trees. Uh, so there is a uh, possibility that if we can create one dwarf mango, a true dwarf mango, that the trellises can become more, I don't know, maybe more, I don't know, less bigger, less bigger. No, 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 so I'm thinking that I don't want to come through here, especially with orchards, right? You say, we were talking, you get mass production on your mango trees. You know, the trees, they, they, they speed up so much calcium, even though we pretty much all limestone out, out here. The makeup of our soil is not always have available calcium. And, and so that would make a big difference on production if, if, you, if, if you lay down gypsum under the tree, not, not lime. But gypsum, but that but if you use gypsum, gypsum not gonna raise the pH of the soil. Where lime gonna raise the pH, and, you know, sulfur to lower the pH. But uh, but gypsum keeps neutral. Plus, gypsum is good for yards, uh, especially if you get on yard with on lawn that get fertilizer. 
because gypsum provide a buffer for salt so you're not gonna have that you're gonna reduce your uh, your your fertilizer burn if you're if you using uh, chemical fertilizers or if you get lawns and using lawn fertilizer yeah so these posts are set up so I do all this myself and so it can be done by one person no I, I don't terminal flaw in this, in this that, that was uh, that was big in that I set them up at the wrong angle your trellises should be like this on the ends, right and then the wires come down to the anchor this post should have been angled like this but then like I set them up like, I set them up wrong because my mind wasn't picturing it accurately. And so now that it's angled like this, that's why I have these added in here to, to hold them back. Because now that the, because as I tighten the wires, is the pressure is pushing down on this post and pushing it this way. And as the trees grow up on the wires and add weight to the wires, the wires they push it out this way. <coughs> Right, so the whole thing is set up with this getting pushed this way right now. So make sure you set them up at an angle going out. Um, I have my back trellises over there are my newest trellises. On those ones, I have avocados, uh, mountain apple, sour sap, and blah blah. And so those are the next trial, right? Because we don't know what the end result is. When it comes down to the trellises, uh, mango is not going to be worthwhile because you get good production. This style, you get good production with conventional style. On the trellises, imagine a hurricane, like being hurricane proof is supposed to be an uh, advantage of the trellis because it protects the trees, it adds support. But imagine this trellis breaking. Like, like what is the fix going to be? Well, it is it in category five. But he, but it was brand new his trellis. Yeah. And now you get ten years on him. I don't know if his well, trellis is going to survive one. It was five years old. No, it was like three so years old. Yeah, but avocado is like you know we were producing two years. We started producing in three years. Um, I'm not sure if he had green at that time on the trees. So if you want to, like, it works great as a thing to look at. Right, so if you're doing farm tours, this is going to be something people are going to enjoy looking at. And, he's and, a little bit of it, and it's going to be good production. I mean, my production is good on these trees. The, the, the kid mangoes, this one is the next one with the kid. I was getting 200 mangoes per tree. I mean, the production was good, but is it worth $20,000 added per acre? Because that's about how much it costs for the trees, it's about $20,000 per acre. On top of everything else, so is it that good? I'm not sure. Now, durian might be that good. Might be that good because, because of how valuable durian is. And soursop seems to do super good, especially soursop really benefit from hand pollinating. With, with the trellises, you keep everything managed in a way that hand pollinating is way easier than than on a, on a regular canopy tree. So there's the, definitely the benefits of the, the trellis, but on a larger scale, it's hard to justify the, the added expense of putting in the trellis. I'm not sure, because they used to say like Australia was going to be planting 50,000 hectare of, of avocados on trellises, but I never heard it again. I heard it one time and then I haven't heard it again and I'm thinking they're like, nah. So you're five years in, you're working with Emily? Yeah? Yep. Yeah. You want to do a farm tour, you want it to look good, maybe put it in the beginning, but if you're going to do commercial on scale. If you're, if you're, if you're going to put in one trellis, I mean, you're going to get better production with that one trellis than you're going to have with a row, one row of trees. Yes, it depends on the scale right? you But then if you're planting 100 acres, or if you're going like that kind of thing, then, then you got to factor in the management. Then. And the thing about this is like, these trees get over overgrown man <laughs> like the bigger doesn't stop but these and like avocados is bigger trees man and that one's supposed to do even better on the trellis but like i don't know if i could be able to manage the bigger on the, on those trees right and so 
So I only do one because I cannot put enough time to do more than that. Because like when I pruning, I pruning, I get really three fields that I need to get through, right? And so, uh, what I've noticed is that if I can get through this field really fast, that it does synchronize the flowering somewhat. And, and it's the same with this one. If I can get through it in three days, then it does synchronize the flowering. And what I've seen on the, the trellises is that when I, can, when I go through this, it almost immediately follows up with flowering. And not, and not it doesn't follow up with flushing. It follows up with flowering, and then it flushes with me. And then it flushes, and then it goes back to flowering. I don't know if, if it's been making it flower better or not. At the very least, these trellises are set 15 feet apart. I would go at least 20 feet apart, if not 25 feet apart. And then overall, if you're trying to increase airflow and increase sunlight in your orchard, you gotta make the space warm. You cannot pack them in, I realize, and then say, this is gonna increase airflow when this is full because it's gonna flush more leaves when this is full it's dense it, it doesn't you can see how the, it doesn't grow very much under the under the on the ground anymore you know it keeps it shaded out enough because all my i started everything with black mats but all the black mats pulled up uh i just haven't shaded it you know i i i say it's because it's going northwest and uh, the wind blowing uh, he's going north to south and the wind blowing this way and the ground gets so dry that he, he shrink it and then you know, all the staples come up. Um, if it went in first, it, if it was established already. Established yeah. And then and then you can do it in I, I don't use the black mat anymore. Uh, because it's too expensive and it ends up, you end up running it over with the lawnmower and it is a mess. I have, you see I've been pulling them up. I have one more row in here that has black mat, but it's been like I dreaded mowing in this field because I know I'm going to have to get off the mower about five times to unwind the black mat from my mower, right? So I hate the black mat, but if you have the, if you had the ability to wood chip everything, I mean great, or even if you could just wood chip or mulch you know the rows, but it, every year you could afford to do that every year. I mean, that would be the ultimate practice to me. You know, even more than than uh, you gotta space it to get the equipment on. It's I is it pretty much 15 feet from center, which only leaves like seven feet in between or six feet in between. So I can probably, I can probably still get my. I get on tractor that I've been waiting for over a year now, but it's supposed to be here in two weeks. <laughs> but it's gonna be maybe a little bit too big for these ones already because it's a you know it's a 70 horsepower it's not the smallest tractor but you need the horsepower to run the implements right so and then the orchard tractors they like eighty thousand dollars so that's it's not affordable but i don't do anything I don't, I do, I'm a one man show out here. I do what I can. I use Roundup when I can, when, because I cannot even get time for use Roundup. I don't do it, hardly any practice except for conservation cover, which is all vo by volunteer. <laughs> I want to do those things. And I feel it's gonna come one time where I'm gonna be able to transition into an organic. If I can get the manpower right, I, that might be, but how am I ever gonna manage the fence line? without glyphosate. It's just not gonna happen. Out here, there's only so much I can do. But my problem with cover cropping so far is that it's hard to water one acre at a time. It's hard to water two acres at a time, right? It's, it's cost prohibitive. So I'm trying to figure it out. And with orchards, you really gotta, it's, it's like tree inst installation, right? You gotta get the cover crop in before you plant the orchard. So I'm gonna. So I have a plan for for that field back there to to do cover cropping. I want to do it. I figured it out. I can probably do it for about thousand dollars an acre to water, right? And and but you see how like all these costs just add up. I was gonna use a sorghum. 
buck wheat and uh, like a like a cow pea trio. I, I, I did cow pea over at the sugar mill. No water. Hottest winter ever. Or, uh, So the glycine weed uh, vine, that, that, that outcompetes the guinea grass, but then that vine is pretty is rough, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, yeah, well, uh, not, not really possible out here with the short trees, but then, I, you know, I hear sheep keep trained to not eat just citrus, but they love citrus leaves, you know, and then, so. And they love the bark of the mango tree. <laughs> and all the pigs, the, 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 the pigs ate the bark off of my mango tree. Oh yeah, and, and ulu, they love, they'll, they'll strip every ulu tree you get on your property. I had some issues once. Uh, the big dogs got in and got a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a sense of it now? Yeah, yeah three, well, three sizes of sense, you know. I just have that one size that I'm waiting to dry up. If it was dry, it would have been there already, but cool. Yeah, we can walk over to the next one. Well, they're different, they're different. So now it's time to get it from here.